Good news everyone! So, I finally built myself a Proxmox V7 based server, in contrast to the previous one, which was Proxmox 6 based. I had to do this because a lot of my viewers suggested that I should upgrade the server and update the videos, because there have been changes between Proxmox 6 and 7, obviously. This is a good thing actually, so I'm happy and uh, thanks for the feedback guys. Based on the changes, I decided that uh, in a quick succession in the upcoming next week I will update my past videos for Proxmox 7, starting with the most popular one, which is about running Docker containers on Proxmox. If you're interested, keep on watching. But first, if you're a new visitor to the channel, my name is Lasta Marza, and this channel deals with home automation, home networking, and sometimes with related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue. So this is the new Proxmox server I have created. As you can see, there's not much of it really right now. I mean, it's running a few game servers that are for the friends and for kids, but pretty much that's it. So this will be kind of like a home lab that I will use from now on for different experiments without disrupting the smart home automation I have for the house and so on. Anyway, uh, getting to the topic of this video, uh, we will create an Alexi container here and we will install uh, Docker within it and we will run Docker containers there. But uh, now with uh, Proxmox uh, 7, uh, I can do a few things on the UI that I couldn't do in the past. Uh, also, there will be a slight difference. In the old host, all the disks were uh, mounted via the usual good old FS tab mechanism. And uh, because of that, I couldn't really show how you how to mount and uh, how to add storage to your uh, Alexi containers uh, via the UI. Okay, let's begin. So remember, this first step is fully optional. So we will just add the directory storage. And uh, for that, I have a disk I haven't even touched. It's just physically installed into the server and that's it. So I go here on the node to directory, then click this, create directory, and uh, it will pick up the disk. So this is the disk that uh, hasn't been initialized yet. File system. I select X4 to remain uh, compatible with other Linux distribution as, as much as possible. I mean, even backward compatible and give it a name. Let's call it CT storage, where CT stands for container. And there we go. Now, as you can see, the disk has been initialized and uh, a file system has been created and uh, now it is uh, visible here on Proxmox as a mounted storage. Okay, now let's start with uh, actual container creation. So you just right click on the node, then select create city, then uh, the uh, stuff begins by giving it a host name, call it test city, then uh, Give it a password for accessing it. And there we go. We could continue to the next one. But first, we have to spot one important difference. So this new checkbox here called nesting. This is something we needed to specify um, in the configuration file manually. Now this is on the UI and checked in by default. So it makes us easier when we need to run Docker containers. Actually, as you will see, uh, if you don't want anything special for the storage or, or for the network, you don't even have to touch the configuration file manually anymore. Now, let's continue. Okay, this, this is the usual screen. You select the storage where your templates are. For me, it's still on the old original storage. And just select this Ubuntu uh, 20 template, then go to the next one. Okay, now screen, this screen has drastically changed uh, compared to the old one, which looked like this. And uh, to be honest, I really had high hopes here, because this is where by default the root file system is added, and you can add additional uh, volumes. 
additional mounts. But the problem is, whatever you specify, it will be always a virtu virtual disk. As I mentioned, I had high hopes here to be able to specify bind mounts via the UI, but apparently it's still not happening. So if you want to uh, mount a local directory, a local folder to your container, you still have to do that via editing the configuration file. Mm, it's a pity. Okay, anyway, let's drop this. I don't need another virtual disk. Let's move on. Rest of the screens are pretty much unchanged. So CPU, then RAM, network. I go with DHCP as usual. Unless you want to have uh, IPv6, you can leave it on static. The actual only change I noticed here is that uh, IPv6 is stated as none, while in the older version this was simply left uh, totally empty, but it's the same. So if you don't write anything here and set it to static, it will mean that no IPv6 IP address will be initialized uh, for that container, which is fine. Next one, haven't changed anything. DNS as usual using host settings should be just fine. And finally the confirmation screen, which is also the usual. So we can select this to have the container started immediately. After having the container started, and uh, once again, I really had high hopes that I will see some kind of support for bind mounts on the UI. So let's go to container, let's uh, let's uh, check out resources, add, this is where you should be able to add the bind mount. But then again, still not happening. So even though we have created an extra storage, which um, should be able to hold pretty much anything like whatever you go, whatever you have in mind uh, you this is just a folder actually so you can uh, access it uh, via the usual shell still no way for bind mounts again this is a shame but uh, yeah let's live with that by the way if you're interested in uh, adding storage mounting folders to your containers, setting permissions and stuff like that, I've uh, created a pretty hefty video which is almost like 55 minutes long about, uh, well, anything that uh, you might want to know about bind mounts. The link should be in the upper right corner and I will also put it into the description. Now, let's install Docker on the new created Alexi container. First of all, you go to your container, click it, then click console. Login. Hit the root user that is created by default, and the password should be the one that you have specified during container creation. There we go. Now, there's a reason that I use uh, Ubuntu uh, containers. And I have to admit that Ubuntu is not the uh, most lightweight Linux distribution you can use as a container template. But it's super easy and super convenient to use and gets updates regularly. Also, if you use a newer template like Ubuntu 20 or Ubuntu 22, then chances are you can just use the Docker, which is uh, provided via the repository that comes with the operating system. Meaning that if you try something like Docker by default, you will notice that, um, yeah, it's not yet installed but you can do the following apt update just to build the package database now once again if you try docker it will say okay there you go just apt install docker.io this will install docker for you with all of its uh, dependencies now i have to admit this won't be probably the newest version of docker but Unless you want to use some cutting edge features, you will be fine, trust me. Let's see what did we get. For that, we try docker dash dash version. Okay, now let's see what is the latest version. So 20.10.16 versus 20.10.12 slight difference in minor versions not bad not bad at all 
still not convinced and want the later, uh, latest version available? Well, you can still follow the guide found in the Docker documentation, which will guide you step by step. Or actually, you can watch my earlier video on the same topic. Anyway, uh, for that step by step installation uh, for the latest version of Docker, I will just put the link in the description. Now, let's see Docker Compose. Okay, same procedure. Let's try what comes with Ubuntu Package Manager by default. Here we go, installation is done. Let's see what we have in the official release notes. And uh, this is the version. I cheated a little and already saved this page. So this is the version uh, Ubuntu installed for us. And uh, Jesus, this one is old. Now, if you wonder what happened to Docker Compose, what's with this old version? Uh, here's something you need to know. So this is the latest version of Docker Compose 1.x. I mean, from the one version. Because apparently there's Docker Compose 2 which follows a slightly different architecture, different installation steps, and so on. So, if you want to go with the good old uh, installation way, you can still do that. There's this one-liner script that is still working. You just need to make sure that there's no leftover version of the old Docker Compose installed. So, if you have installed it, do it like I did, I do, and remove it. And now you can use the, the one-liner script to download the Docker Compose binary. And then you need to add the executable attribute for the binary we have just downloaded. Now, as you can see, this is the latest 1.x version of Docker Compose. You could obviously ask the question, why haven't we installed Docker Compose 2? As I mentioned, Docker Compose 2 is slightly different. Also, it has some different prerequisites. So, instead, I decided that I go the classic way here. This is the way people install Docker Compose for years. And then, in a separate video, I will concentrate on cutting-edge stuff with Docker and with the newest version of Docker Compose. So, instead, Let's try our installation. Let's see whether everything works as expected. The drill is the usual. We will just use docker run hello world. Okay, so we have a working docker installation within an LXC container on Proxmox 7. For this video, we have reached our goal. Before finishing the video, let me ask you a question. Have you upgraded to Proxmox 7 already? Because, yeah, it's been out for a while, and shame on me for not upgrading earlier. In my case, it wasn't a classical upgrade, so I didn't have to face all the problems people are talking about on forums, on Reddit, and whatnot. But uh, if you have a question or a story to tell, like um, how was your case with the upgrade or how Proxmox 7 made your life easier, feel free to use the comments to share it. Anyway, I think it's time to close the video. Thanks for watching and um, hope you liked it and hope you see you next time next week with another one. Bye!